Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holder and welcome to part two of our hunt for grunt. That's where we're looking for more torque from our big block Chevy, you know, to use as a tow motor. But before we get into all that, what happens with our 496 buildup, please make sure like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. So you get notified when I do all these because this is part two and guess what? There's also a part three coming up. Here in part two, we're going to take a look at our 496 buildup. We added displacement compared to the 454. We added more camshaft. We added more cylinder head. We did retain the same 420 mega blower. So let's find out what happens with our 496. And by the way, you know, just for good measure, when we ran the thing and naturally aspirated with our dual plane intake, I threw in a little carb spacer test for you. So let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right into part two, our 496 buildup. Hopefully you've taken a look at the video back in part one where we ran the 454 and we did the upgrades on it, you know, different heads, cam and intake manifold. And then we ran the 174 blower and the 420 blower. But now I decided to step up that motor to make it even more NA power. And then we could find out at least what the 420 blower does with the larger 496. So let's take a look at our new NA combination. We took that motor, that 4, uh, 461. Actually, I was saying it was a 468. It was actually a 461. We took that motor apart and upgraded it with a stroker assembly from SCAT. We had the 4.25 inch stroker crank. We had forged rods and we had forged flat top pistons. And unfortunately <laughs> on the 496, the forged flat top pistons and the large chamber on our Canfield heads produced a static compression of around 8.2 to one. And I did that on purpose because as we know, especially way back in the day, I'm like, okay, it's going to have, have a blower on it, right? We're going to run a bunch of boost on it. It's got to be low compression. <laughs> Obviously, people are thinking differently now. But at 8.2 to 1, this could be a good boat motor. You know, it could go in a... Um, a motor for a boat that was running a long time at wide open throttle with one of these blowers on. This also allowed us to run all of this on pump gas, so it worked out fairly well. So what we had was with the SCAT components, we had a 496 stroker. <coughs> this thing was bored this time, 60 over. Um, flat top piston with valve release, which allowed us to run more camshaft. And then the added displacement right away is going to add more torque, which is kind of what we were looking for all along in our hunt for grunt. So to improve the power output, we also changed the camshaft. We put a comp hydraulic roller cam in it. It was a 646, 623 lift. It was a 236, 242 F50 duration and 114 degree lobe separation angle. And we ran this with a cam button and stuff on it. We also replaced the ported 049 heads with the set of Canfield uh, 315 CC uh, intake port aluminum heads that were unported. They were just as cast from Canfield and it's a cylinder head that I kind of wanted to try back in the day and they we were lucky enough that they supplied a set and they worked very well. The other things that we put on this combination um, because again we're kind of looking for torque uh, a performer RPM air gap dual plane intake manifold a 950 hauling because this is a bigger motor it's going to need more airflow. We ran some two and an eighth inch dyno headers and then you know, went through the same procedure that we did with the 454. We did the break-in procedure, although this was a hydraulic roller cam, so it was less important for the cam break-in. We weren't worried about it at all. And then we uh, dialed in the air fuel that we had an MSD distributor, dialed in the timing, and everything worked out fairly well. And here's what happened on our NA combination. We were in our uh, dual plane, you know, canned 496. It produced 565, 566 horsepower. 582 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. I did a quick test while we had this NA motor on there, and a lot of guys will like this. We decided to run a carb spacer uh, on our dual plane intake manifold. I ran a one-inch uh, open spacer on this just to kind of get the peak power up a little bit, and it did what these carb spacers normally do. You see it did pick up power. Peak power was up to 577 horsepower. Peak torque was also up. 592 foot-pounds, but you can see down here below 3,900, it did lose low-speed power, and that's typically what we see on these dual planes uh, on most of these motors. If we put a half-inch or one-inch open spacer, 
it, on, on the dual plane intake manifold, it starts behaving a little bit more like a single plane, not totally, but it does what this did. It added more power on the top, and, but it did lose power down low, and it also would lose a little bit of drivability. It would be a little bit softer down low. But now let's take a look and see what happened. We got our NA496 up and running, and obviously it's working well, and it's making a lot more power than our, you'll remember, our big block 454 made only 436 horsepower, 437 horsepower. So we're way up from there. Rest assured, there's going to be a part three to this where I compare the 496 to the 454, naturally aspirated, compare them boosted at the same pulley ratio and at the same boost and all kinds of good stuff. But there's so much data here that's going to have to wait for part three. For now, let's go ahead and add our 420 supercharger to the 496. Okay, guys, we have our Canfield headed 496 up and running now, obviously. It's time for boost. So let's go ahead and add our 420 blower, dual 750 blower carburetors on it. And we'll start off with a fairly mild pulley ratio. In fact, this was with a 56 blower pulley and a 50 tooth crank pulley. So we're not spinning that thing very fast. In fact, we produced a peak of out here at 6,100 RPM. We produced a peak of 4.3 pounds. And the interesting is the boost curve started out on the load in at 4.2 pounds, dropped down to 3.7 pounds, and then rose back up to 4.3 pounds at 6,100 RPM. And equipped with this blower and this drive ratio at 4.3 pounds, we produced 728 horsepower and 690 foot-pounds of torque. So right off the bat, a blower went from 577 to 728. We already picked up a pretty good bit of power, even at just 4.3 pounds, but <laughs> obviously we're not done there. So let's try another pulley, shall we? That's the nice thing about having a supercharger. The roots blowers just swap pulleys, put new ones on. And what we did was we replaced the crank pulley we went from a 50 tooth crank pulley to a 52 tooth. So we made the crank pulley a little bit bigger, speed things up a little bit. We went to a peak of 4.9 pounds at 6,100 and peak power jumped up to 500 or 759 horsepower. Peak torque, you know, just nice little railroad tracks like we like with these blower things. Peak torque was up to 710, foot, no, there's one right here, 712 foot pounds of torque. So doing pretty well, and all we did was jump up basically six tenths of a pound. So we needed another pulley change. So this one, not only did we do a pulley change, we went to a 54 tooth crank pulley from a 52 to a 54. This increased um, peak boost out to six and 6.8 pounds, but that's because we revved it all the way out to 5,700 RPM. The reality is that it was only about 5.7 pounds measured at that 61, at that same 6,100 RPM shutoff point. So we went up basically roughly two pounds of boost on this, but revved it out a little bit farther, but we exceeded 800 horsepower. <laughs> so it was doing well. Um, out at 6,500 RPM, we were making 804 horsepower and 730 foot-pounds of torque. So we made one more pulley change, but we didn't continue to rev it out to 6,500. We were still at 800 horsepower, but we were at 800 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, and then peak torque was at 745 foot-pounds, and at 6,100, we were up at seven pounds. So basically, we were up another 1.3 pounds from our previous run. So had we continued to rev this thing out, which we didn't do, and I'm not sure why this was, this was quite a while ago. But the nice thing is we were up over 800 horsepower if we would rev it out and up over 800 horsepower with a bigger pulley and we're only running like seven pounds there. Seven pounds of boost, pump gas, you know, carbureted. This is really a good combination. We had 30 degrees of timing in this thing. And, and, and unlike the previous combination, uh, when we ran the 454, we didn't have iron heads and we also had much, much lower compression and a bigger camshaft. So less dynamic compression on the bigger 496. So what, what that means is that we would be able to run this thing safely on pump gas without any problem. <coughs> and the nice thing, this is what happens when you run a bigger motor 
a bigger camshaft, better cylinder heads, and then you can actually allow the blower to do what the blower is designed to do. So this is what happens when we get a 496. Unfortunately, I never got to run this combination in our truck. It would have been very fun, although it definitely would have required something more than our stock rebuilt turbo 400 transmission when you're making 800 horsepower and 750 foot pounds of torque with a blown big block stroker motor you're going to need to beef up the transmission and probably other things in the drivetrain as well but this is how well it works when you make all those combinations and put them together our mature holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff coming up in part three we're going to take a look at a comparison between this 496 with the 400 with the 420 blower and the 454 with the 420 blower we're going to look at all the stuff we're going to look at the na combinations and figure out why did the 454 make almost the same amount of low speed power as the bigger 496 what happens when we run these things with the same pulley ratio what happens to boost and what happens to power what happens when we run them at the same boost level what happens to the power output lots of good stuff coming up in part three so make sure to check it out